Hey guys, welcome to Sequential Consequence. My name is Nelson. Today we're going to be doing a collection tour. Finally. You guys have been asking and I'm finally going to do it. So without further ado, let's just get into it. So before we get into the actual collection, let me like give you a little a pan out right here. And, uh, you know, these are my comics. Uh, there's some, I have some more in the back, but, uh, you know, that's a, that's a, it's a video for another time. I just kind of want to give you a little overview. So first of all, let's go on to the uh, stuff that's over here up top, uh, or next to some of my Euro comics. So we've got the Akira box set. Uh, the first book is out because I was, I had started to read it a, a couple months ago, but then I, I don't remember what it was. I got, I got like heavily into something else and, uh, I just kind of had to put Akira on the side cause I needed to give it my full attention. Then over here in a temporary spot, we've got um, some of my art books. They're usually not here, but I, I kind of like having them like, you know, ready to grab so that I can look through them at any time. Uh, you know, they're kind of like uh, in front of my some of my uh, comics. Uh, but yeah, first of all, we got Asano's uh, Control Plus T2. Uh, also, I have the first Control Plus T mini, which uh, I want to get the bigger version of that. Uh, then we got the Art of Pasuka de Miso, who's the mangaka for uh, Promised Neverland. Some really good stuff in here. I'll probably do an overview of this uh, at some point soon. Then we got Gurren Lagan Artworks and uh, The Art of Junji to Twisted Visions. Uh, if you want, I have overviews of Twisted Visions and Control Plus T2. If you want to find them on my channel, uh, I will leave links in the description. Uh, so yeah, now let's get into the actual shelf proper. Whew, just give me a second to catch my breath. I'm trying, I don't want to take too long with this video. So, um, you know, I'm kind of move move along through it pretty quickly so first of all we start with Nijigaro Holograph uh, by Inu Asano it's only up here because I don't want to have space for it in the shelf below it uh, then we've got a uh, Vinland Saga 1 through 11 uh, which are all the books that are out so far uh, then we've got Plan Eddies by Makoto Yukimura same mangaka as uh, Vinland Saga hence why it's next to it uh, then here we've got uh, Wandering Island by Kenji Tsuruta, along with some other Tsuruta stuff, uh, uh, such as Eminon, uh, books one through three. Uh, this one is pulled out here because uh, I am currently uh, on this one. Uh, then we have Dorohi Doro, uh, the whole series, up one through 23. The books get progressively thicker, and I just can't get over how cool that looks. Uh, also have this volume pulled out because that's the one that I'm on. I'm still pretty pretty early on on this. Uh, I'll go a little bit harder on it once I get some other things out of the way. Then we go down here onto my favorite. Uh, we got Inu Asano. Uh, and uh, this is mostly in chronological order, but this is uh, the entirety of his uh, works that have been localized. Uh, the, first, we start with What a Wonderful World, which is a collection of short stories that are kind of interconnected. Um just uh which is uh really good but probably the weakest of his works uh then we got solonin which is probably what i would recommend you start with um then we got solonin and epilogue which is uh, probably kind of hard to find nowadays uh but it's just a little epilogue that came uh s like several years after the story is actually concluded uh you don't really need it but it is pretty nice uh i know some people don't like it though um then we got goodnight poon poon uh Arguably, uh, Asano's magnum opus. Uh, this series means a lot to me, and uh, you know, maybe one day I'll make a video on why that is. But if you've read it, you can probably infer why. Uh, then we've got Downfall, uh, which is uh, just a really good book, um, especially for being only one volume. Uh, this is about uh, a mangaka that is just kind of disillusioned with the industry, let's say. Then we've got Dead de Dead Dead de Dead Dead Demons de 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 Destruction. Um, this is shaping up to be a, an incredible series. I am on. Uh, I have to read volume three now, which is why this volume is out. Uh, I am taking it very slow with this series because I don't want to run out of Asano to read. So uh, I am taking this really slow um, when it comes to uh, Dead Demons. Uh, then down here we have some books that don't quite fit. We got the Infamous Girl on the Shore. Uh, and then we have a Japanese version of uh, City of Light, uh, which is a really good uh, a story by Asano that I hope uh, that Viz or anybody uh, collects, uh, as well as uh, some of his uh, other uncollected stuff, because he does not have a lot of uncollected stuff, and most of them are uh, standalone volumes. So it would be cool if they would uh, release those, such as Ozanari Kun and Before Dawn and the End of the World, and... Um, what else is there? And the collection of short stories. Um, but yeah. 
And then here we got some Moyoko Ano stuff. We got Sakuran, uh, which I think is uh, out of print, or at least it was when I uh, found it. Uh, then we got Insufficient Direction, which uh, I actually can't wait to read because it has <laughs> Ideyaki Ano over there on the on the cover, and uh, it just seems super uh, charming. And then we have In Quotes Called Fat, which is uh, the only one that I, of hers that I have actually read and uh, was really good. Uh, down here we have uh, Urasawa stuff. We got Pluto. Um, which is, uh, the only one of his I actually have read, um, but I love Pluto. Pluto is really, really good. Um, it's almost too good. <laughs> it's, uh, it really is almost too good. It's, it's just one of those series that's just immaculately paced that is, that I'm almost, like, mad at. Like, I'm mad at it for just being so perfect, basically. And uh, then we got 20th Century Boys right here, um, which is, uh, almost complete. I think we have two... Two or three more volumes. I think we have two more volumes of the 20th Century Boys than uh, another volume of 21st Century Boys. Someone correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, then down here we have uh, Monster. Uh, all nine volumes, which are uh, all two-in-ones, uh, like the 20th Century Boys. Uh, then we have Mujirishi, um, which is just a standalone. Then we have Sneeze, which is the short story collection. And then here we have Children of the Sea, which... Let me actually grab the other volume for you guys. So that y'all can see how it looks all together. Because I am in the middle of uh, reading uh, Volume 4 right now. Uh, as you can see, the, the bookmark. But uh, these books are just beautiful. Uh, I've been I've been really loving this story. I think it's... Uh, for a lot of people, I think it's going to be something special. And uh, this is a series I really don't see on anybody's collection. Um, and, uh, you know, I would highly recommend it. I'll probably do a video on that uh, at some point. Um... And then uh, down here, uh, we have some of my hardcovers. Uh, we have the Berserk all the way up to uh, five. I don't have the sixth one yet because it's uh, out of stock on uh, in stock trades, which is where I usually buy my Dark Horse stuff because uh, they have uh, they always have Dark Horse stuff for 42% off. So uh, that's a better price than you can find on pretty much any other place. Uh, same deal with Helsing, although Helsing is in stock, but I'm just not in a rush to to grab the second one. Uh, I actually might read this one first but to see if uh, I actually like it enough to get more. Uh, then we have uh, the mystery of, or not the mystery, is uh, the strange tale of Panorama Island. Uh, this is uh, an adaptation of uh, an uh, Edongawa Rampo, uh, if I'm saying that correctly, uh, a story. Uh, it, I got it mostly for the art. The art just looks great, uh, but it's also a book I don't see on uh, almost anybody's collection. Um, probably not a story for everybody either. Uh, then we got uh, Dementia 21 by Shintaro Kago. Uh, I've read a little bit of it, and uh, it's really good. Uh, if you like Junji Ito, this is probably a safe bet. Uh, then we got My Brother's Husband by Gengoro Tagame. Um, I know there are two like hardcover volumes that collect the same thing, but I wanted the big, the big book. Uh, and let's get, we'll go up here, right back up to right here. Then we got Land of the Lustras. Um, and uh, I have the first, vo I have some of the first volumes right here, but we have Land of the Lustras, um, volumes one through ten. Uh, I think this is current. I think there, I think there's a volume eleven is coming out soon, I think. Uh, but I uh, only got as far as the volume three on this, but I read it a long time ago. So I'm actually, uh, rereading volume one now because i want to uh i want to dive into the series uh, a little bit more seriously now um same thing with witch hat uh this is a series i absolutely love but i've actually only read the first volume uh, and that probably makes me a fake fan but you know i don't really i don't really care about that um but i'm actually rereading the first volume so that uh i can also uh, dive into the rest of the series in earnest because i remember there were a lot of rules about the magic um that uh you know i want to remember because i love magic systems and uh the one here is uh just great just very well uh designed um but yeah great series just incredible art uh definitely check it out this is a series i probably would recommend to anybody uh based on my reading of the first book and speaking of really underrated series that are amazing and more people need to read to your eternity this series is just incredible it's it's uh, it's it's almost a little too heavy uh, for me, and um, that's why I've been going very slowly with it. As you can see, Volume Five is pulled out because that's the book that I uh, the one that I'm I need to read now. So I actually have not read that much of it, but I I will sing this series praises as high as I can because this series is incredible. Uh, 
and it just it just resonates with me in a way that a lot of other series don't and i'm uh, just curious to see where uh you know where the future of the series takes it uh, but you know if if you're gonna take my recommendations of any series in my collection uh, this will probably be one of the highest recommendations even though you know I've only read uh, what I've read uh, then down here we've got uh, we got a little pin of land of the lustrous that I kind of just stuck there next to uh, you know the manga that was uh, given to me by my good friend Donis then uh oh sorry I want like I need to like catch my breath a little bit I'm trying to get through this pretty quickly I don't want to waste y'all's time and then here we've got uh, B Stars volumes one through eight. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people already have up to ten, but unfortunately, uh, Right Stuff is holding my pre-orders hostage. Um, but yeah, amazing series. I I think B, B Stars will probably end up in my top ten once I finish reading it, uh, because it uh, it just touches on uh, on some themes like no other series does. Then down here we have the manga adaptation of uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion. I say adaptation even though the manga actually started before the show, but the show was the original, so it's just kind of it's just kind of a convoluted uh, uh like origin story, I guess. But but basically this is an adaptation. Basically the anime is the original, but uh this does have some differences and I'm just really excited to see what they are because Evangelion is uh, my favorite anime of all time. Um so I'm super excited to get around to this, but you know I'm no, I'm in no rush. I've already experienced the story in several different canons, and then we have uh, Fire Punch. Uh, this is uh, Tatsuki Fujimoto's first series. Well, I don't know if it's his first series, but it's uh, the first series of his that I read. And you might recognize his name from Chainsaw Man, which is like just huge right now. And uh, that's a series I will have to get to. Um, you know, I try not to collect series uh, that are on the Shonen Jump app uh, because you know I only have so much space. But I do think that Chainsaw Man is one that I do need to have because Fujimoto's art is just incredible. And so is the storytelling. Fire Punch, though, will be very hit or miss. Uh, I think like uh, pretty much every volume after the first one is super different. The first one starts super edgy and then things get kind of meta and then things get kind of like fun. It's just kind of uh, really uh, a series that goes a lot of places. And I think for some people, uh, like they I think they'll really enjoy it. Um, but, uh, you know, there's there's just a lot of edginess to get through. Um, and then right here we have uh, Shuzo Oshimi's Happiness, uh, which is a vampire series. Just incredible series with uh, uh, great, just super great art. Uh, and uh, not only is the art amazing, but uh, the sequential storytelling in this is just out of this world. Like, Oshimi is not afraid to let the book breathe and to just let the art... Um, you know, speak for itself and just let you get immersed with uh, in the atmosphere. Um, and I have this here because it's next to some other Oshimi stuff. But before we get to that, let's go down further down into the shelf. So down here we have uh, my lesbian experience with loneliness, which is the only one of these that I've read. And then we have my soul exchange diary one and two. Um, which I have not read yet, which I should read soon because she actually has a new book coming out that's called My Alcoholic Recovery. I don't know, something about alcoholism, but yeah, duh, but I like her stuff a lot. Um, these are basically slice of life stories that, um, and that are, uh, faintly colored pink. So, uh, everything, I should, should probably show you some of it just so you have an idea of what it actually is. But yeah, some of it is like colored pink and it's just, uh, really, a really heartfelt uh, Frank series that uh, I think a lot of a lot more people should read. And then we have Watakoi, uh, Love is Hard for Otaku. This is a series I think I'll probably sell. Uh, I do think it's charming and I do like it, but um, I'm not a big fan of the format. It's kind of like it's not a four coma, but every page it's its own is is its own like comic strip basically, and then they all kind of connect. Uh, and it just has a lot of references to uh, nerd culture. There was like some cool Monster Hunter references in there, and uh, you know I like that. I like I like that about it, but I just can't gel with the format. I just I just can't really do it. Now here is another one of my favorite series of all time. This is Grand Blue Dreaming. I have one through ten. I think uh, Volume Eleven is out now as well. Uh, this is another series that I try to go through very slowly. Uh, in part because there's not really, like, a, an overarching story. I mean, there are some overarching, like, relationships and stuff like that, but there's not really any overarching story. 
Uh, so I try to read this like when I just need to pick me up. So I try to keep some volumes, you know, apart, you know, and unread so that I can read them, you know, if I'm ever in need of a pick me up. So I have not read volume 10. I'm actually almost caught up with it, unfortunately. I try taking my time, but, you know, it's just too good. And uh, same deal with Delicious in Dungeon. And this is another one that I'm also missing a volume in here that I can grab real quick. Ah, uh, that's volume two because I'm reading volume two right now. And this series has already impressed me quite a lot. Um, it's just a very uh, endearing series. And uh, I love... I love the covers a lot. Just the art is just so good. And... Um, it's just a really heartfelt series, and I ha I did not expect it to have the amount of character that it does. Uh, and then by also by Ryoko Kui, we have uh, Seven Little Sons of the Dragon, which is a collection of short stories. Um, and then we have Doubt, uh, which uh, I'm probably going to sell. I don't know. Uh, I don't really feel very strongly about it. Um, but we will see. And then... Oh, yeah, down here. Um... This is just a book that I pulled out. Uh, and then down here we have my Matsumoto collection. Uh, which is another one of my faves. Uh, but it's a visa fairly recent uh, discovery for me, though. So, um, But yeah, Tekken King Crete, just amazing. One of my favorite books. Uh, Ping Pong, I will read very soon. Cats of the Louvre, also amazing. Uh, Blue Spring, probably his weakest work. Uh, this is also severely out of print, so you might have a hard time finding that. Uh, and, uh, speaking of severely out of print, so is this, uh, Go Go Monster, uh, which has this annoying kind of cover, like, cardboard thing that I don't want to throw out, but, yeah. And the pages have that, uh, they're, like, gilded, I guess? I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's considered gilded, but they have that design on them, which look, just looks so cool. Uh, I really like that story a lot. Um, if you want, if you want to see a review of this, I do have one, uh, and I'll try to link it in the description. If I remember. And, um, but yeah, and then we got Sunny, which uh, I hear is his magnum opus. And I'm super excited to get to it because it just looks incredible. I mean, these books are pricey, but oh my god, the art is just, is just out of this world. Um, then here we have another one of my favorite series, uh, something that I read pretty recently. Um, this is The Drifting Classroom uh, by Kazuo Mez. And uh, I just, oh, man, this series is just so good. It kind of goes through all kinds of all sort of genres of horror and um it's just it's just a really good series i highly recommend especially if you like junji ito because he inspired a lot of ito and uh from here we're gonna go uh from the bottom up into my uh horror section then here we have hell baby by dashino another guy that um inspired uh junji ito quite a lot and uh and over here we have two more of his books uh we have uh on nimbo and the books from hell uh part one and two uh, these are books three and four of uh, the Hinoora collection. I think um, almost all of these are super hard to uh, to find. Uh, I actually haven't read Hino yet, though. I actually haven't read any of these, so I'm not sure if I'm going to like it. It seems kind of corny, but we'll see. And uh, then we have my Junji Ito collection right here. Uh, we, we have the, uh, the actual uh, long-form books, Tomie, Uzumaki, and Gyo. I don't think I really need to explain very much about those. Uh, these are all long-form stories, uh, but they all, they're all they all still kind of told through, you know, one-shot format, kind of, but they are continuous. And uh, then we have, uh, you know, we have Shiver, we have Frankenstein, Smashed, Fragments of War, and Venus in the, fly, in the Blind Spot. Uh, I haven't gotten Remina yet because Right Stuff is holding my purchases, unfortunately. But um, but yeah, all of these are really good, honestly. I, actually, I have not read a Smash. That's the only one that I haven't read yet, uh, because I, you know, like like my philosophy with a lot of my other favorite things, I kind of try to keep you know one thing unread so that I can you know still have some to read, uh, at least until I get uh, Remina. Uh, but yeah, every single one of these is really good. I would say that Shiver is probably the best one, and Venus in the Blind Spot is now the best one, because Venus in the Blind Spot was literally released as uh, a best of kind of thing. So, um, you know, I think this is the strongest. I think if you ever want to start with Ito, uh, start with this, if you want to start with the short stories. If you want to start with uh, Long Form, start with Duzumaki. Uh, and then there's also No Longer Human, 
which uh, I have not read this one yet, uh, but I am reading the novel and I have read the Furuya adaptation. Um, that's like severely out of print. Uh, I also have not read Cat Diary, uh, keeping that for a day where not, when I might need some cheering up. And then there's the Solving Classroom, which is uh, probably Ito's weakest work that I've read, but it's still kind of funny and entertaining. And, um, and uh, yeah. Now we have, uh, up here we have The Devil Man, uh, Classic Collections, the 1 and 2. Uh, this is a series that, uh, you know, I have a lot of problems with, but I really love. Uh, and I uh, also really like uh, Crybaby, the Crybaby uh, adaptation. Uh, but Devil Man, just uh, one of those series that is just super gruesome. And uh, But, you know, if you go into it with the right mindset, I think you will uh, enjoy it. Uh, then up here we have uh, Rose of Versailles. Uh, this is one of my only Udon books. Uh, this is so nice. It's just gilded everywhere. Um, and uh, just a very nice release. Like almost everything about this book is gilded. And uh, I actually have the second one on the way. Um, and, uh, and then I think I will order the third pretty soon after. And uh, then we have another pretty recent acquisition, My Broken Mar Mariko. Uh, I have not read this yet. I tried, I actually tried starting it, but it seems like it's going to be a pretty heavy book, um, you know, about loss and mourning. And, uh, you know, I'm not ready for that. Not right now. Uh, then, uh, here on the side, we have, uh, the first volume of Kaon, uh, my friend Adonis gave me, because he knew I was a fan of the anime, and, uh, it seems super endearing, uh, but I have not read it yet. And, uh, then up here, we've got, um... Oops, sorry. Uh, here we go. Here up here we've got Nabadi no O, uh, which I actually don't know what that translates to. Uh, but I got this series because I really loved the manga. Cause other series are Dreams at Dusk, and uh, this is uh, just a really uh, heartfelt uh, slice of life LGBTQ series that just touches on a lot of those uh, a lot of those uh, topics. And uh, I just thought it was. It was really good, so uh, when I saw someone selling this, I had to get it because, uh, well, they were selling it for a really good price, and also this series looks really good. Uh, it's, uh, as far as I understand, it's a shonen ninja series, but it seems like it has a lot more focus on in interpersonal relationships and things like that, rather than just being more of a straightforward shonen. Uh, or at least that's my impression so far. I also really like these, uh, these spines, and I like how at the end they kind of switch it up a little bit. Um, but yeah, and, uh, then we have some other 7C stuff. We have Spirit Circle, uh, one through six. Uh, it's probably, I'm probably going to read this pretty soon. Uh, I've been kind of craving it. Uh, then we've got Orange one and two, uh, which, uh, my friend Gio gave me, uh, and, uh, I definitely want to read this very soon because the subject matter seems like it's going to be, uh, super interesting. Then uh, over here we have some Gen Manga, or Gen Manga, I don't know how to pronounce that. We have Soriko and A Normal. Uh, basically, Gen Manga, they're kind of... They're manga that are produced outside of Japan, I think. I don't remember what the... Oh, uh, here we go. Indie manga from the Tokyo Underground. They come straight from the artists in Japan to you. So, yeah, they're basically just indie manga. Uh, from what I understand, and we have the first uh, Japanese volume of Hunter x Hunter that my friend Alex gave me uh, when he went to Japan. Uh, and I skipped some, didn't I? I think I skipped some things, but no matter. Um, then up here we have the continuation of my of my Shuzo Ushimi stuff, which is uh, I showed you happiness earlier. Then here we have the Flowers of Evil. Uh, well, one of my favorite series of all time. This is my top five. This is just so good. Uh, but I say that as Blood on the Track seems like it's going to be even better. Uh, this is shaping up to be even better. Uh, I've only read the first volume because I, I want to have the rest to, uh, I want to have at least more so that I can binge them. Uh, I know people have up to four, but unfortunately, like with other books, right? Stuff is holding my order hostage. Uh, then we have Inside Mari, uh, volumes one through six. Uh, I'm really eager to get into this series. Subject matter looks really cool, but uh, unfortunately, the last three volumes have been delayed for a very long time, and uh, and COVID just delayed them until like I don't know. I think the last one now is coming maybe in like four months or something like that, and 
you know, they were all supposed to be all already. So it's kind of a bummer, especially with Oshimi, because you kind of need to binge Oshimi. Oshimi is a very bingeable mangaka. Um, then continuing with my Dempa books, we've got uh, Shintaro Kago's Super Dimensional Love Gun. Uh, this is a collection of short stories that I was kind of divided on. Some of them are really cool and had cool concepts, but there were also some uh, unsavory things in there that uh, left a bad taste in my mouth. Um, then we have an invitation from a crab by Ponponya. Incredible. I really like this. I really like this, uh, this book. This book is something special, something unique. And, uh, even though it's not something mind blowing, it's definitely something that I would recommend to a lot of people. And, uh, you know, there's another Ponponya book by Denpa that's supposed to be coming out. That uh, was supposed to be out for a while, but now I think it's only coming out near the end of the year, which is a bummer. And the biggest bummer of all when it comes to Dempa's delays are is Heavenly Delusion because this is one of my favorite new series. Um, it's just an incredible series in a post-apocalyptic world that follows like two... I don't know. It's, it's just full of mystery and... Uh, yeah. I'm not going to say too much about it because it's easy to spoil things even within this first volume. But just a really good series and I can't wait for more to come out. But unfortunately, they've been um, delayed. Then we have Maiden Railways uh, by Asumi Konakamura, uh, which is uh, kind of uh, a, a bunch of connected one-shots that are revolving around the train station. Uh, it's pretty sweet. Uh, there are continua There is a continuation to this following one of the couples from the stories, but uh, they don't seem to have any plans to publish it. Um, I did ask them about it, too, and they were like... And they said that uh, Maiden Railways was one of their first licenses, so they didn't really think past that, basically, is what they said. Uh, but I do hope they they get they do the rest eventually, even though it's not really necessary for these stories here. But it would just be nice. And uh, the reason I got all of Asumiko Nakamura's stuff was because I love Utsuboro so much. And um, uh, I do have a review on this book, and I suggest you check it out because this this really left an impression on me. And uh, so it's just a really good book, and um, definitely one of my favorites. And um, I got classmates because I liked us making our cameras uh, work so much. And also I needed some um, some variety in my collection. I needed a little bit more romance. Uh, so, so yeah, I got this. And this, I think, is a BL. Uh, actually, I don't, I don't think. I'm sure it's a BL. I mean, it should be super obvious by the covers and the spines. And uh, speaking of which, I love these spines. They're just so slick. Um, but yeah, looking forward to that because Nakamura's art style is just really good. Uh, then we have After Hours, which is, uh, I believe, a Yuri series. Um, I got it because it was only only three volumes, and it seems to revolve around music. Uh, seems to be uh, super sweet. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, then we have Genkaku Picasso, which uh, I have read one volume of this. This is by Yusumaru Furuya, whom I mentioned earlier, because he did the uh, No Longer Human adaptation. Um, that is super out of print. And I liked that quite a bit. You know, I thought it was a little overrated, but I liked it quite a bit. Uh, so I got Ginkaku Picasso. And uh, Volume 1 was uh, all right, but it seems like Volumes 2 and 3 are actually going to be quite good. So I'm looking forward to uh, getting back into that series. Uh, and then we have Lichi Light Club, which is also by Ferulia, but and seems super edgy. I don't really know much about the series other than it looks super edgy. Then going further up, we've got uh, Silent Voice here. This is by uh, Yoshitoki Oima. Oima who uh, I mentioned earlier also did uh, To Your Eternity. Uh, this is our, definitely our most known uh, series. This is the box set, uh, which comes with a little uh, notebook right here. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really uh, I'm looking forward to reading this because To Your Eternity just left such an impression on me that I'm, uh, I'm curious to see where she came from. And then uh, we've got uh, uh, some uh, Monster Hunter O-Rage. O uh, this is actually by Hiro Mashima. These books were given to me by somebody. Um, and uh, honestly, they were a really good gift because this is something that I would not buy on my own. But is but it is something that I'm actually uh, curious about because I'm a Monster Hunter fan. And uh, I'm not really a Mashima fan uh, at all. But uh, the art in this looks pretty good. And uh, I'm just I'm just curious to see like some... Uh, to read some Monster Hunter fan service. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, same deal with this. I found this at a store and I was like, oh, an X-Men manga? What the hell? Uh, so I picked it up and uh, I think this is actually the only volume that's out. Um, I don't think they ever continue this. Uh, and then here we've got a manhwa, uh, Chinese manhwa by uh, Joe Chen, um, The Other Side of the Mirror. I kind of got this because I just, uh, I, I wanted to get some manhwa in my collection and this is a short one. 
And, uh, you know, I found both volumes. So, uh, you know, I just got it. Seems like a pretty safe bet. And then here we have we have Welcome to the NHK. This is one of my favorite anime from my teenage years. I haven't watched it in a very long time, so I don't know how it holds up or how the manga holds up uh, because I know the uh, this is originally a novel. So I'm curious to see how the each adaptation stands. Uh, they both have really good ratings, so I'm expecting this to be about as good as the uh, about as good as the anime. Uh, but yeah, these uh, these volumes I thought were out of print, but they recently showed up uh, on Right Stuff, so maybe they're not as out of print as I thought. And then we have a series that I got simply because I found it for cheap, and uh, it's short, and that is King of Thorn, uh, because it's only six volumes long. Um, and the premise seemed pretty cool, so uh, I'm curious to see uh, what uh, what comes from this. Uh, this manga car, I think, is the same one that does Dimension W. I could be wrong about that. Someone correct me on that. Um, but he has uh, he has a newer series that uh, I think is still ongoing on Shonen Jump. Uh, I'm so out of breath. And uh, let's go up a little bit more. Here we got my Tezuka stuff. Uh, starting with Buddha, I have the uh, actually I don't even know what publisher that is. That is Harper Collins. The Harper Collins versions. Uh, I do know there are uh, hardcover versions with connecting spines as well. Um, but I can never find those for a good price, and uh, these, these should do the trick, and uh, they look great. And then here we have the Book of Human Insects. Uh, I have not read this one yet. Uh, and then uh, we have Apollo Song, which I'm, I'm actually super excited to read this one. I feel like it's going to resonate with me just based on what I what I read on, of the summary about it. And then here we have uh, a lot of platinum manga. We have uh, Clockwork uh, Apple, which was really good. We have Alabaster 1 and 2, Crime and Punishment uh, adaptation. We have Under the Air, Melody of Iron, Barbara, and Record of the Glass Castle. Um, now, most of these are uh, collections of one-shots, but some of them are not. I know uh, Clockwork Apple is one-shots. Uh, Melody of Iron, I do think, is one-shots. Record of Glass Castle might be one-shots. I don't know. Actually, don't, don't trust anything I say. This is definitely not one shots, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I read Clockwork Apple, really liked it. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading the rest of it. Uh, I've also read uh, Ayako and MW. I've read some other uh, Tezuka stuff that is not on my collection. So that is why I went so hard on his stuff. You know, I'm not just getting his stuff on a whim. Yeah, you know, I do. I do enjoy his writing. Then up here, we have uh, the full series of I Am a Hero. This is uh, 11 omnibuses collecting two, vo two volumes each. Um, I really like these uh, these spines, and uh, even though these books are small and stocky, uh, they, they they read pretty well. I actually really like them. Um, I do need to read more of this. I uh, only read up to volume two, I think, or I, I got a little bit into book two, basically, I think. And then I kind of stopped a little bit, and I decided I needed to, I needed some more time to devote to it. Then over here, we have my Inu Asano, like, tote bag. Uh, my friend Alex got me this, and uh, I don't think he knows how much I actually love this. This is, I love this bag, and uh, I kind of just want to turn it into a poster. So that's kind of why I'm just standing, just sitting here. Uh, but it has pretty much all of the Asano characters, like all of them, <laughs> like all of the ones that you could think of. And uh, I love it. It's just so cool. Um,. Yeah, here we have some uh, some some uh, pops. I actually don't own a lot of pops, uh, but my friend Gio gave me this one, and I love Bakugo. He's one of my favorite My Hero characters. Uh, and then here we have some uh, Gunpla. They're just kind of uh, not very posing right now because they're well, uh, they kind of fell, and uh, you know I just kind of straightened them out a little bit just now. Um, but yeah, these are the only ones I have, and uh, Ava's horn broke so i actually got to replace that they did give uh they did it did come with a replacement so i'll do that soon got a little pokemon trainer right here and um here we got uh all you need is kill uh then we got satoshi kon's opus which is uh, super underrated and in my opinion everybody should read it then we got Shiro Masamune's orion uh this is the ghost in the shell manga i just kind of got this because i found it for cheap and you know it's a uh, standalone uh, then down here we have the Pokemon box sets. Um, 
Knights, which uh, they're kind of they're super beaten up. And uh, I I, I want to sell them and get the uh, collector's editions instead. Um, so that's why these are most of the things that are like in this side of the shelf are things that are that I'm probably going to end up selling. Um, then here we have Shaman Warrior, uh, which is uh, one of my only Korean manma uh, by Park Jun Ki. And uh, I don't really know how much I will actually like this. It seems fun, though. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it actually goes. But the art looks incredible. So I'm uh, looking forward to that. Then we have uh, uh, Sunstone or not Sunstone. <laughs> there is a comic called Sunstone. That's why I called it that. And it's a comic about uh, bondage, about BDSM. So that's kind of why I, I always get two names confused. This is Sundome. And um, I think this is about uh, similar uh, themes, but I, th I think it's just, uh, I think it's about a kid who just will not, is not allowed to orgasm. And I think that's the whole premise of it. But I've heard some pretty good things on it from a psychological perspective. I've, I've heard that it's uh, a strong uh, uh, manga from uh, a psychological perspective. So uh, that's mostly why I got it. Um, not that I need to excuse my, uh, my pervy, my one pervy manga, uh, um, in my collection, but, you know. Uh, then we got D. Word the Gelder, um, if I pronounce that correctly at all, by, uh, Samura. Uh, this is, uh, just incredible. The, his art is just out of this world, and, uh, the reason I have, uh, pretty much all of Samura's stuff except Blade of the Immortals, because Blade of the Immortals would take too much space. And also now they're releasing those fancy uh, deluxe art covers, so um, I will probably be getting that instead. Uh, but yeah, I got the World of Gelder. The third volume of this should be coming out pretty soon. And then we've got uh, Emerald, which is a collection of short stories, and uh, Ohi Koshi, which I think is also a collection of short stories. Um, yeah. Then we got Tempenchu, also a collection of short stories. This is by the mangaka of uh, Eden. Eden, it's an endless world. Uh, I think these are actually super out of print, uh, and I think so is this. Uh, then down here, next to my horror stuff, we've got uh, H.P. Lovecraft's The Hound and Other Stories, uh, which was quite good. It has three Lovecraft stories in there, and then we have uh, At the Mountains of Madness, which was amazing. Uh, really good adaptation. I would highly recommend it. Um, uh, then we've got uh, Parasite, 1 through 8. Uh, I think there's a series is actually like 9 Tonkan Bonds, but they somehow like fit into 8. And it's kind of weird that they did that. Um, looking forward to this series, actually. Really looking forward to it. Looks looks like uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, then down here we have some stuff I'm probably going to sell. Uh, we have Ran in the Grey World, which was a series that has really good art and can be charming and endearing at times. But there's just one character here that... Kind of gives me the EBGBs, and uh, if you've read this at all, you know who I'm talking about. And uh, so I'm very unsure if I even want to continue this series at all. Uh, it's only six or seven volumes. I think it's seven. So uh, I might just get the other ones and finish it off, but it's probably going to get sold. So I don't know if I even want to get them. Then by the same mangaka, we have Go With the Clouds, North by Northwest. Uh, this looks really good, but I... You know, it, it it's ongoing, and I don't really know if I'm going to want to uh, continue with it. We'll see. Then down here, we have a series I actually really love, which is Golden Kamui. We have 1 through 9. Uh, the reason I say I might want to sell this is because this is on the Shonen Jump app, but uh, only on the desktop version, because apparently apparently kids don't have desktops, so that's how they... I guess that's how they <laughs> try to keep more mature series from... All right, a little little jump cut here because my phone stopped recording for some reason but yeah continuing on there's a uh, dream fossil uh this is a collection of short stories by shizoshi khan um uh, uh i was kind of underwhelmed by some of these uh but you know i'll have to give it another shot later on and to see if i actually like it um but yeah this book is actually not mine but uh i it's just been too long for me to return it so now it's a little awkward and um here we have my my head that keeps falling. There we go. You stood up. And here we have some uh, Gekiga. Uh, we have uh, Yoshihiro Tatsumi's The Pushman and other stories. We have uh, Yokoyama's Iceland, which is uh, quite the trip. Uh, then we have uh, AX, a collection of alternative manga. 
and uh, please excuse my finger in the way. Uh, then we have Shigeru Mizuku's Hitler, and then we have uh, another uh, Tatsumi uh, book, uh, The Abandoned Old in Tokyo. Uh, then up here we have uh, Opossums 1 through 3. These were uh, given to me, but I do think I will continue collecting this. Um, I'll, just, I'll have to check it out first, but um, I do think I'm going to like this a lot. Uh, then we have Wolfmund, Wolfsmund 1 through 8. Um, I do think Volume 1 is out of print. Um, but yeah, this is a series by the by an assistant to uh, Miura on Berserk. So I'm kind of curious on it from that front. But also the character designs look great and the art inside looks super kinetic. Uh, then we have a pretty underrated series. This is Prophecy. Uh, it's only three volumes. This is something that uh, if you liked uh, Death Note, I think, you, uh, I think you would enjoy this. Uh, then we have uh, four volumes of To the Abandoned Sacred Beasts. Uh, this is a series I'm probably going to sell. Uh, I've read two volumes, and I've just, I'm just kind of underwhelmed by it. It doesn't really do... It's not really doing much for me. Then we have Valentina Mandala, which um, I think someone actually recommended it to me. I think Mr. Sushi recommended it to me. And, uh, you know, I liked it up until a certain point. Uh, but there was a scene here that I was just not a fan of. Um, and just kind of soured the whole book. Um, so I would not recommend that. Uh, but overall, uh, I did, I did like the rest of it. So I don't know. Maybe I'll give it another shot. I don't know. Um, but that should be it. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything here. That should about be my collection. Um, yeah, I don't think there's, uh, I think I got, I think I went through all of it. So yeah, not 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 very large. Uh, hopefully, it will be smaller. Uh, you know, hopefully, uh, a lot of the stuff like right over on this side right here, this stuff is probably gonna get a lot of this stuff is probably gonna get sold. Uh, a lot of it I need to read before I will actually sell. But you know, that's but the the, the stuff more on that side are things that I'm a little bit more uh, a little bit less. Uh, uh, confident that will stay in the collection well the stuff here will most likely never be moved or rather you know it will always stay in my collection uh as well as some of the stuff you know in this in this section like junji ito i'm never gonna sell junji ito come on uh shuzo shimi also never gonna sell that um but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed it i will have a comic book collection uh soon enough um and, uh, actually not soon enough but I, i'll have it eventually um, you know, usually my books would actually not be that pushed in, but, uh, they were, uh, I had to get my windows fixed, so I didn't want my books to get damaged, so I pushed them all in, but, but yeah, that's my collection, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, hopefully I talked about things enough, and made it brief enough that you guys can still enjoy it, so, um, yeah, see you guys later, and bye-bye.